Hello and welcome to SNR Tech Bytes. Today we're going to have a video about repairing a broken scroll wheel on a mouse. As you can see, it just doesn't work anymore. It was kind of disappointing. It's an expensive mouse, so I figured, well, let's try and fix it. So I spent a little time, figured out that the scroll wheel actually broke in half, so what I did is I designed and 3D printed a new scroll wheel. And those files will be available for you to use if you want to. So we're going to go through the process of taking apart this mouse here. The first step, obviously make sure it's off. You don't want to accidentally short anything out as you're working on it. And then what you're going to do is you're actually going to take off the two stickers on the bottom here. This is the uh, Corsair uh, Iron Claw Wireless. And usually the best way to do that is just kind of get a razor blade underneath there and you can slowly peel them up. I already did that earlier. Next I'm going to bust out the trusty iFixit kit here. So in order to open this mouse we're actually going to need a T5 Torx driver. Pop that open here. And that's the only two screws that are holding the whole thing together. So we're gently going to pry it apart and you'll notice that it separates from the top and the bottom and this little black plastic piece is going to pop out right here. Next what we're going to do is on this right side here this piece will pop out as well. We're going to kind of separate the top just a little bit. We're going to carefully pry this out. Now there's actually a clip up here, so you're going to need to kind of wiggle it back and forth. Be very careful. If you feel like you're applying too much force, you probably are. There we go. So you can see the clip that I'm talking about right there. And then there's this metal band that has the, the top two anti-slip feet and it actually clips on right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a nail or you can use a tool if you need to and just kind of gently pop that off. Once you kind of get it unhooked from the clip, there is a little tape on the back side so it'll take a little bit of force to kind of pull it down and then you'll notice that it pops off from the back side there. We'll set that aside. The next step is going to be taking this off. Now there are two clips up here that hold it down. So what you're going to do is you're going to kind of lift and then you're going to apply a little bit of kind of backwards and side to side force and you'll hear it kind of click twice and then that whole assembly will come off. Now we're kind of into the meat of the mouse here. So the two buttons here are actually on, an, on a neighboring PCB. So similarly, we're going to pop this kind of up this way. And it'll pop off along with the LED indicators here as well as these two buttons here. Be careful, there is a wire attached. Gently grab the plastic. Don't pull from the wires, but the plastic. Wiggle it back and forth. Sometimes getting a nail under there will help. And it should pop off. Next, we're going to grab a J00 Phillips head screwdriver. Now, be very careful if you notice, there's actually a grounding plug right here that shares the ground with the under the circuit board underneath as well. So, we're going to unscrew one, two, three. four, hidden behind the wire here, Phillips head screwdrivers. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be very careful to, there's actually a, a connector right here that links the top board and the bottom board, so you're going to gently pry and it should pop out and you can see the scroll wheel pop out. Now because of the way my scroll wheel is broken it popped out immediately, normally it wouldn't do that because it's actually going to be in, there's going to be a piece of plastic in this encoder right here. Now I will say at this point that I actually had this button die on me as well. So this is the button that's used to click the uh, scroll wheel. 
The way that I fixed this button here is I took it apart and then I actually soaked it in isopropyl. I sprayed isopropyl on it and I just sat here and clicked it a whole bunch of times with my finger. Uh, what that does is it works as propylene and it actually uh, knocks off any oxidation that are on the contacts, which is usually the most common reason that you're going to have a button like this fail. These are all real Omron switches here, but uh, this is not an Omron switch, so I don't really trust its longevity. That's one of the best ways to do it. If you're getting real fancy and that doesn't fix it, what you can also do is it's just a two pin solder button on the back, so you can see the two pins here. You could uh, desolder this button and resolder a new one on super easy. Breathe a little extra life into your mouse. All right, so now we're getting into the new scroll wheel here. But what we need first is this piece of rubber. It's kind of textured rubber, it just pops off. So we can take that wheel off. Here's the old one. You can see where it broke previously. So we're gonna grab that piece of rubber. We're just going to slip it on over the top of our new scroll wheel. Now, if you're going to 3D print the scroll wheel, you should really use resin printing technology. Um, this is actually going to be a hexagonal shape to fit into the encoder. And FDM printing probably won't be able to print those details well enough. So resin printing, or if you outsource it to SLA or something like that, is going to be probably your best option. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to align it with our encoder. We're going to slip it down until it lines up with the side of the encoder. We're going to kind of roll it back and forth to make sure that the, hex, the hexagonal shape slips into the encoder properly. And we're going to very gently push it into the encoder. Make sure you hold the encoder as well so that you don't accidentally snap it off of the solder joints. Now, kind of roll it back and forth and you should start feeling the tactile click again because you've made contact with the encoder. So we're going to start reassembling our mouse here. Make sure you grab that grounding wire from earlier and slip it between the encoder um, and the, between the circuit board and the wheel and then gently slip your mouse, the top circuit board back down to the bottom circuit board of your mouse. Be careful because this wire tends to get stuck underneath, so make sure you don't get that pinched. And then also, if you look very closely, the encoder wheel does have a little plastic rim that it wants to line up with, so you can kind of slip this back and forth as needed to make sure it falls into that plastic rim. That'll help keep it supported. Kind of let that clip down on top of your circuit board. I'm going to make sure that the encoder wheel still feels comfortable to kind of scroll with. It's not binding on anything or stuck on anything that it shouldn't be. Mine is just a little bit, so I'm going to push it in. Perfect. That feels great. Make sure you can still click. Still clicking the button. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to start reassembling the mouse. So first things first, we're going to take those four Phillips head screws. Remember to take the the ring terminal and slip the screw through that for this one on the upper left hand corner of the mouse. All right, we're going to start on the left side here. We're going to take the circuit board and our plug and we're going to plug them back together. Be careful to make sure that the pins are actually aligned. You'll notice they're offset. Okay, now there's actually four little holes on the bottom of this and those are going to align with the four pins on the mouse. So we're going to carefully slip it in. Now what I've noticed is when I plug this one in, it usually turns the mouse on. So be ready for that. See if it does it today. Yep, there it goes. So we're going to come back onto the bottom. We're just going to turn the mouse off. Now next, we're actually going to have to change this up a little bit because it's really hard to put back in this configuration. So you're going to notice there's actually three plastic tabs. There's one tab here, there's one tab here, and there's one tab here. We're going to depress this top one first just with our thumb, bend it back so it kind of slips out, and then slipping our finger between the two pieces of plastic, we're going to unclip the other two as best as we can. Once you have all four undone, you should notice that the two plastic halves will separate. 
Now, there are two hooks on this side, so be careful because those are going to be hooked here and here, and you don't want to accidentally break those. You'll want to also notice that there's a light diffuser for your light on the front of your mouse. Just make sure you don't lose that. So we're going to take this piece right here, and we're going to carefully slip it over our scroll wheel. And then, like I said, there's the two clips there and, and there. We're going to just kind of finagle those and try and push them under the plastic. Don't apply too much force. Get them both clipped in just fine. Good. And then we should be able to slip this down. Next, we're going to take that metal band that we took off earlier. We're going to start by putting it on this side of the mouse, kind of slip it into the same place that it was. Come over the top and then make sure that it clips over that plastic piece there and make sure it's seated correctly. Now we're going to take our right side of the mouse. It's got the same four kind of holes on the bottom of it that are going to align with the four extrusions on the plastic. We're going to lift the top of our mouse just a little bit to make sure we can slip that guy underneath. Okay, now if it's not flush, make sure you kind of move it back and forth until it clips into place and is flush on the bottom of your mouse. Finally, before I put the screws in, we're going to put this back piece back in right here. Same thing, it's got some holes on the bottom. I'll line that up with the extrusions on the plastic. You're going to have to lift the, the top of the mouse just a little bit. Make sure it's in place. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and put the screws back in. So we're going to grab our Torx bit again. Again, this is a T5 Torx bit. This would also work with the TR5 if you happen to have one. I'm not even sure that exists, but that's the one with the hole in the center of it versus having no hole in the center. Sometimes also known as security Torx. Okay, once those screws are back in, we're going to take our diffuser and we're going to slip it back in place over the top of that LED. Now finally we're going to put the top of our mouse back on. Best way to do this is to start front to back so you've got those two white clips. They're going to slip kind of underneath inside. This is going to take a little bit of force but if you look through the side of the mouse you can see where those clips, those plastic clips are going to line up with the holes. Kind of slide them down, clip them in place. Now sometimes you'll notice that this didn't seat all the way. So this one did, but this one didn't. If you take your finger from here and you just kind of slide and push, it'll pop right back in place. Make sure all the buttons are working and clicky. Finally, we're going to take those pads that we took off earlier. We're going to line them up. Most of the time the tape's going to be reusable a couple of times. Uh, you may notice that it doesn't sit perfectly. Be careful, try not to get your finger oils on the bottom of it or anything like that. I'll line it up with the edges and then kind of spread it over the top. Do the same thing on the other side. And the best way to make sure that works is just put it on your mouse pad and Put a lot of force on top of the mouse, slide it around. That's going to get those pads to kind of fit back on there well. If you kind of do a little friction with your finger, it'll also work in reactivating that adhesive a little bit. Worst case scenario, you can add a little bit of double-sided tape or something to the bottom of this to really make sure that it adheres again if you have a problem with it falling off. But since most of the time your mouse is going to be resting on the surface, it shouldn't really matter. And there we go. Fixed mouse.